I'm going to cover mouth breathing and I'm going to cover big tonsils and I'm going to highlight the interplay and also the differences. Let's start with mouth breathing. So mouth breathing, first up, is not a diagnosis. People talk about it as if it is and that's not correct. It is a sign. It is a sign of a problem with breathing and in the majority of cases, and this is all science based and I've shared these links before, in the majority of cases it is related to either large adenoids and then uh, allergic congestion in the nose and then large tonsils and then issues with a deviated septum and then blended in with this can be compromised jaw structure as well. Okay, But by far the big two are adenoids and allergies, nasal allergies. And the reason that they are mouth breathing is because they are otherwise blocked and not able to sustain their natural element of breath. The other thing I wanna just reflect on because this was shared amongst the conversation pieces when I put this up, is that the, um, th there's this whole thing about carbon dioxide and breathing and so forth. Now, the thing that drives uh, breathing is the carbon dioxide level and you will clear carbon dioxide better if you breathe through your nose than breathe through your mouth. If you are breathing through your mouth, in order to clear the carbon dioxide, you will increase your respiratory rate. This is not hyperventilating. Hyperventilating is breathing beyond what is physiologically necessary. If you need to breathe more to clear carbon dioxide more, that is not hyperventilation. Furthermore, you do not end up dropping your carbon dioxide to below physiological normals if you're a mouth breather, you are getting them back to normal. So uh, a lot of the, uh, the, the talk and rhetoric that talks about mouth breathing leading to low carbon dioxide and affecting the body systems um, is completely flawed, flawed scientifically. Uh, you cannot rewrite the laws of physiology. So I just wanted to throw that into the mix as well. So given that mouth breathing is a predominantly a symptom, the management then comes down to addressing the underlying cause and that's where people like me exist. Because given that the majority are due to adenoids or allergies, they're the two things that we focus on in an effort to improve things and whether that proves to be through medication or surgery, that's what we need to do. Now if there are other issues blended in with that, for example jaw and, and, and skeletal issues, yes they absolutely need to be managed. but they are not the big picture in the mainstay for most people. Yes, it happens sometimes, but sometimes is definitely not most of the time in terms of the primary big issue that is going on.